They told me that I would probably be dead by the time I was 50. I thought, no, this is not possible. Karen Tickle always knew that she was different. From the time I was nine, I would have intense stomach pains and diarrhea that was bloody. Little does anyone know she's living with a potentially deadly disease. I was really scared that I might die. From the moment Karen Tickle was born in a North Carolina farmhouse in 1964, her parents, Jim and Margaret, knew she was special. I was born with albinism. All the other children had dark hair, and hers was just as white as it could be. The doctors told me that being an albino made her very sensitive to the sunlight. When I was a baby, my mom had to buy these little sunglasses because the sun was so bright and it hurt my eyes. And it's not long before her parents observed something else different about their little girl. At three months old, I began to notice it. She didn't seem to see anything. I knew something was very wrong, so we went straight to the doctor's office. They diagnosed her as legally blind. Even with the most powerful corrective lenses, most legally blind patients can't see anything more than 20 feet away. Around age three is when I got my first pair of real glasses. They were a little tinted and quite thick. I thought it was pretty cool because I was the only one in the family that had them. At home, I was just part of the family. I never thought I was really that different from other kids until I went to school kids at school were not really very nice. They didn't like to play with me that much. I never really said a whole lot to my parents about what went on. I've always been the type of person to just try to handle it on my own. Despite being teased about her unusual appearance, Karen is a happy child, excelling all through elementary school. I was a very good student. I was the top of my class. Then one day, soon after her ninth birthday, Karen is playing outside when she's suddenly hit by a wrenching pain in her abdomen. At first, Mama thought that it was just a stomach ache. She just gave me some type of stomach remedy. But over the next 48 hours, the cramps intensify. The pains would become increasingly stronger, and by this point, I started having runny diarrhea, fevers. I was going to the bathroom a tremendous amount for a little girl. Her parents have no idea how sick Karen is until they check on her in the bathroom and see blood in the toilet. She was trying to have a bowel movement and started bleeding so bad that we knew we had to do something, so we carried her into the hospital. When we got to the hospital, I was terribly afraid. They took all my information, and the doctor had ordered some blood draws. They ordered tests of my entire digestive system, all the way from the esophagus down to the rectal area. The doctors decided that I had Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a chronic condition in which the walls of the colon or lower intestine become inflamed. This causes diarrhea, acute pain, and often leads to bleeding sores, also known as ulcers, on the intestinal walls. They found bleeding ulcers. They put me on steroids to get rid of the ulcers, and then they put me on a maintenance drug to try to keep it under control. But while Karen dutifully takes her medications, the Crohn's symptoms continue to flare up. From the time I was nine until the age of 13, it's really a blur. Once every three to six months, I would have intense stomach pains and diarrhea that was bloody. It's indescribable what those pains were like. They were so severe. Karen does her best to get through each attack. But one Saturday when she's 13, 
things take a terrifying turn for the worse. I had gone to the bathroom all day long. There was bright red blood in the stool. I had lost so much blood. When mom got home from work, I said, I feel bad. I, can I go take a bath? As I was laying in the bathtub, my heart started to pound like it was going to come up through my throat. I noticed blood in the water. I knew this was not right. As I stepped out of the bathtub, I thought I was passing out, and my vision became dark. And at that point, Mom comes in. She took one look at me and had somebody go and find my daddy. We got Karen into the car, and we rushed to the hospital. I just knew we had to get her to the doctor. When I got to the hospital, they got me into the treatment room. I remember I was scared. 20 minutes later, an ER doctor informs the family that Karen has lost a tremendous amount of blood, and her blood pressure is now dangerously low. They transfused uh, approximately four units of blood that night. They found what appeared to be bleeding ulcers. They believed that the bleeding was from the Crohn's disease. Karen's hemorrhaging so severely that her medical team is forced to make a radical recommendation. The doctors told us that Karen's complete loyal intestine was just diseased and that there was no other way except to completely get rid of a loyal intestine. I was shocked. The surgeon will have to perform an ileostomy a procedure in which the large intestine, which is made up of the colon and the rectum, is removed, and a pouch is attached to the abdomen to collect waste. The colon is where the body stores the feces. So what would happen is it would drain into the ostomy bag, and you would take it to the bathroom and empty it. It was humiliating, especially for a 13-year-old. And I was concerned how my life would be in the future with dating and having children. It was extremely difficult to, to cope with it all. Thirteen-year-old Karen Tickle has just been admitted to the hospital after bleeding intestinal ulcers have left her barely conscious on the bathroom floor. I had never had the feeling of passing out. I had never had my heart feel like it was going to jump into my throat. Now, Doctors are concerned she might not survive another attack of Crohn's disease, the horrifying intestinal condition she's been battling since she was nine. Unfortunately, the only way to keep the disorder from killing Karen is to cut out her large intestine entirely. It means she'll have to wear an ostomy bag to collect waste for the rest of her life. Since they said that was the only solution, we just accepted it and then went ahead and had it done. I think it was a tough decision for them to make. I think they felt it was their only choice because they felt I might not live to make it to the hospital the next time. I remember laying in the bed and mom was sitting beside of me. I started to cry. I could tell that upset mama because she goes, are you okay, are you okay? And I said, oh yeah, I'm fine because I didn't want her to be upset. It was always important for me to be brave. That night, Karen is wheeled into surgery as her anxious parents look on. I just remember feeling that I was tired of hurting. I wanted to get better. Naturally, I worried the whole time she was back there. Six long hours later, the surgeon pronounces the operation a success. probably about a week after surgery feeling better much much better not having any pain no more diarrhea was liberating it was awesome not to be sick relieved to finally feel healthy after enduring so many years of pain Karen adjusts to the ostomy bag with remarkable ease it really didn't take long to get used to it 
If she didn't tell you she was wearing a bag, you wouldn't know it. Over the next four years, I felt like I was just a normal girl. Thrilled with her newfound freedom from the insufferable symptoms, Karen throws herself into the high school social scene and graduates with honors. I was excited to start college, but on the other hand, I was scared to leave home. Well, it's always been hard with all my children to, to let them go from home, but it was hard enough to let her go. Karen soon settles into college life, and in the spring of 1983, the 19-year-old meets a man who sweeps her off her feet. Tommy was, of course, he was cute. What attracted me to Karen was the fact that she uh, was very bubbly and very fun to be around. Things get serious quickly, and Karen finds herself facing an awkward dilemma. The hardest part about having an ostomy and dating is you have a fine line. When do you tell this person you have an ostomy? Tommy and I have been dating probably a few weeks. I had noticed on her wrist she had a bracelet, so I asked her what this was, and she said it was a medic alert bracelet. I explained that I have to wear this little bag on my side, and then I took his hand and I placed it on my stomach so that he would know where it was at. And I sort of thought, hmm, this is different. I thought to myself, what the heck, she's still real nice, you know. It was a bonding experience in a way. Closer than ever, Karen and Tommy continue to date throughout college. And almost as soon as Karen finishes school, they get married. As I got ready to walk down the aisle, I was not nervous because I knew that he was who I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And within the year, the young couple learns that Karen is pregnant. My pregnancy was probably the healthiest I've been in my entire life. I had a very good, uneventful pregnancy. On August 27th, 1988, Karen gives birth to a healthy baby girl who they name Holly. I was like the proud mama, and Tommy was like the proud papa. When Holly was born, it was just fantastic. I was just jumping around the place, dancing around with the nurses. <laughs> it was great. We uh, enjoyed life as a regular family. She was doing a great job watching after Holly. At this point, we had a, a good family life. I had years of really good health. As time passes, Karen begins to feel that her medical problems are a thing of the past. Then, out of the blue, she receives a startling voice message in the fall of 2002. It said, Karen, you don't know who I am, but I'm related to you, and I have a son who has albinism and Crohn's disease. And she proceeded to tell me that her son my cousin had a rare genetic disorder. They felt I needed to see a doctor and get tested because if I had this disease, it was a real possibility that I might die. I didn't understand what was going on.